Okay, but what if I'm the business owner who is like, I really don't want to raise my prices and it's not because of a mental head block. Like I know this is what I can charge and this is the fair rate and I'm still at my capacity. What's the other lever that I could pull? Okay, so the only other lever you have control over is the amount of time you're spending on your average client project. And so you have to reduce the time it takes you to complete the project. That sometimes means changing the scope of the project and reducing the deliverables because th the price and the time are not in alignment. Um, sometimes it means you need to get really clear on your boundaries because you've been consistently over delivering mm -hmm. on what you say you will do. And you've been giving a lot of free time yeah. away or, or perhaps you are, um, you're just not clear on what the deliverables really are. And so you are kind of willy nilly, like, feeling like, well, I think they need this too. Or like or, as soon as they ask for something, you're like, oh yeah, I got that. Yeah. And then you just do it. Yeah. At which I'm like, is that even in your right. scope? Like, was that even in the original plan? Like, what is the plan? Do you have a plan? What, like, I, so then I'm like, oh, maybe you need to get your contract in alignment to match mm -hmm. the thing. But, but to get, to reduce the time you spend on a client, a lot of this could be as simple as systems. Like maybe you don't change the deliverables right. at all. Maybe you don't change um, anything about what they see on their end, but you add systems on the back end to reduce the time it takes to, to get there. It, it could be batching more like tasks together. It could be having a better project management system. It could be having more clear processes. Mm -hmm. It could be having better software mm -hmm. to help reduce that time. There's a lot of things that feeds into the reducing yeah. time, but ultimately it's time it's or money. The, Those are your two most valuable yeah. resources. Yeah. I, I, I love, I think it's a really fun challenge and hack, um, you know, looking at your processes once a quarter to say, to truly know, to do an actual time study. Have you done one mm -hmm. <laughs> to really get <laughs> like actual facts on how long it takes you to you know, complete a project or work with a client from literally start to finish from like interest and discovery to signing them to fulfilling to off boarding them and everything. Um, how long does it actually take? And then really like doing a, a time audit on that of like, okay, if it takes me X amount of time right now, how could I just decrease that by like 20%? Like wh where are my areas of opportunities? Are there things that I need to start offering, stop offering that aren't really beneficial. Like what I enjoy the most when we do this exercise with our clients is that they like, you know, look at every single thing they go like mining into every single thing that they offer this client. And they're like, Holy crap. I didn't realize I offered and was doing all of these things. Typically it's calls. It's like strategy calls, consulting and like feedback calls or whatever that are just like ridiculously long <laughs> and so excessive throughout the months or the quarters that they work with their clients. They're like, Oh, they, they like, did, we don't have any value in those. I bet I could condense those to a 30 minute pre-recorded loom video and send it to the client and it would have actually a better impact and save me a shit ton of time. Yeah. Well, and it's going to vary by yeah. industry. It's going to vary by what you're ultimately delivering, but how you get there, there's so many ways to look at it. And I definitely think a time study is a great place to start. I know for our client, Bonnie, that was where she started you know, she had, she had done some time studies in the past, but I don't think she'd ever really looked at not just by project, but like by client, mm -hmm. how much time she was spending and, and looking at, okay, what are, what's the time it's taking me to run the business? And then how much of my time is being divided per client? Cause then what'll happen is you don't want to just do it by task type, because you won't see what clients are the yes. problems. You you also have to be aware of what clients mm -hmm. are are causing the issue. Because you might be delivering the same service to four or five clients at the same time. Okay, great. But is one of them who's paying half yep. the price getting twice as many hours as everyone yep. else? Oh, oh, well, then, then yeah. this becomes 
less of an efficiency conversation and more of a, I need to have a conversation with this yeah. client. This client is causing yes. problems yes. for well, me. And I think we're just blind it, to it. We don't want to see what's exactly. truly there. Well, and, and, it, and, and realization that our clients have had too, and Christina is one of them who, you know, she's offering basically the same offer, but to different like tiers of clients who have like different budgets, but they're getting the same experience, no matter their budget. And we were like, Oh no, you can't, don't do that. Cause that is going to help. That is going to be the catalyst into you hitting that burnout ceiling of reaching the time and income ceiling faster. Um, if you're offering the same experience for different tiers of clients. And so you got, she got to like really take a peek in and saying, okay, these clients needs aren't high level tier needs yet. They're getting high level service and offerings. How can I adjust that and actually serve them what's within their budget, what's within their time constraint or size or whatever it might be. And I think that that's a really good reflection that you don't have to offer the kitchen sink to every single client. You literally don't. No, no. And I, I, so this is the other thing I see happening. Um, Shelly is a great example. Our client, Shelly, she came to us when she had a wide variety of the offers. cheesecake factory menu of offers. What we, what we call that. <laughs> and she had a wide variety of price points associated mm-hmm. with those offers. She had some that in my opinion were great and premium yep. and, and the scope was there, you know, 10, 12, 15 K offers. But then she also had these like $300 yeah. services. And yeah. I was like, mm, but why are you still doing this? Cause, cause if you looked at the time now, granted a $15,000 web project, is not getting the same amount of time as this $300 thing over here, but you, you have to be mindful. And this is, this is where you really have to be looking at the whole, the whole picture and say, okay, it, it might take an hour to do this $300 project and it might take 15 hours to do this $15,000 project. But Mm -hmm. (laughs) I, if I get three clients that each take an hour, I've made $900, but I could like those three hours could be a third Mm -hmm. over here. And that would be $5,000 worth of product. Like, cause they were, we're at a third of this package. So then you're like, Oh, my time's not worth even exactly. amounts. Do you know, does yeah. that making sense to you guys? 